Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today will be Destiny Hot Takes Episode 2. Our leveling system sucks. Alright, so why does our leveling system suck? Well, there's a couple reasons why. One, we have two different leveling systems, and they don't interact with each other at all. They are two completely different things, and the normal MMO slash looter shooter slash RPG meaning of experience actually means realistically nothing for about 75 to 80 percent of the player base if not even less than that maybe even more like 90 percent of the player base based off of the the reason i say that is based off the numbers of percentage of player base that has cleared one gm this season it's about eight percent which isn't great um but eight percent of the player base which is good but not great considering it's one of the pinnacle activities inside the game. So, if people aren't clearing DMs, means the power bonus doesn't actually mean a whole lot to them because they're either playing Legend or Masters, and most people can get to a plus 10 pretty easily just by playing the game. I mean, you'll get to a plus 10 power bonus pretty easily. And if you're 10 under most masters, you're going to feel just fine. They're going to feel pretty playable. And so our leveling system doesn't make any sense because now oh, to dictate gear, we have an arbitrary number that actually doesn't affect anything, you know, all honesty, because the power bonus affects your gear more than anything else. And then we have activities that can just cap us at a certain level and affect us in a way where you get forced under level, but your light level has to, you have to have an entry level to get into the activity, and then you're still forced 25 under, but that 25 under could have been, could have made you so that you had to be zero. And then you could be 25 under still because they just make the activity 25 and they just make your level 20. And the reason I know they can do this is because the legendary campaign exists and where the activity literally takes your whatever your light level is at the time, whether you're 15, whether you're 1600 or whether you're 1200 somehow, your light level. The only thing that can happen is if you're lower, then you actually feel it. But if you're, you know, we could be 1 million. And you could enter the Witch Queen le Legendary Campaign and you would still be put at the 20 under that you are for the entire campaign. So obviously, they can force us to be certain levels and they can lock us out of activities by capping us at certain levels. And they can force the game to be harder if they want it to be harder. So why do we have a leveling system at all? I think it's in part due to the fact that a large portion of the player base doesn't have a lot to achieve for because part of our issue is end game loot doesn't isn't actually better than a lot of other end game loot regular game loot um a good example of this is the master vow of the disciple weapons i know this probably comes up a lot but the Master Vow of the Disciple weapons, though they are adept, and yes, you can slot in adept big ones, which is, or adept Icarus, which I don't think a single one of those weapons means anything in PvP to the point where you would put adept Icarus on it. But I do think that adept weapons suck, because, especially from Master Vow, because. You can just craft the regular weapon, get enhanced perks on it, which, yes, most of the enhanced perks kind of suck. A couple of them are actually pretty good. And you can get weapons that are just better from the regular version of the raid, which in all honesty isn't that hard. And next season we'll be able to very easily over-level said activity because we're going up another 10 levels. So, very easily next season, you can be 10 to 15 over what Val is, and it will only have been a season-old raid. 
And so I wish to understand why we have power level at all, or as most games would call it, the average gear score level. Because to me, it doesn't seem to make any sense that we have it at all. In four weeks, GMs will be taken away from us. However, it doesn't make any sense to take GMs away from us because they have a level cap of being whatever the power bonus is, whatever pinnacle cap is plus 15 and you have to be that level before you can enter it but the activity caps you at 25 under and the funny part about all of this is they could literally say the gms are 25 power level with all the same modifiers they currently have but what the game could do is the game could literally tell you your power level zero and so the gm could be power level 25 but as long as it puts you at 25 under whatever that power level is it will feel the exact same to you because it doesn't actually you don't do more damage for being 1580 versus being power level zero if you're the same light level distance from an activity if you're 1580 and the activity is 1580 then you do a certain amount of damage if the light if the power level of an activity is zero and your power level zero you're going to do the same damage because of the way the game works. You don't deal more damage for being 1580 versus being, you know, zero. Because it's just based off, the only reason you'll feel whether you do more damage is based off the level of the said activity. And that's why strikes at the beginning of the season felt like they were suddenly more challenging. It's because you were on light with them all over again, which for most people feels weird because most of the time we're significantly above the level of regular strikes. So, I would love to find a solution. I do think leveling needs to be a part of the game. I do think we need to have a leveling system that has gateways to end game content i do think we need to find a way to logically gate people to end game content but we also need to find a reason to play that end game content something we currently lack pretty badly um the only real reason i personally play gms is because a they're kind of fun b they are the best way to farm a the adept weapons because they're a guaranteed drop every single time you clear one and also mass work materials because they drop more consistently from gms however i'm not gonna run an extra hard gm for the sake of running an extra hard gm for farming purposes i'm gonna run arms dealer i'm gonna run fallen saber i'm gonna run the easy things and so I think we need to find a way to have a better leveling system that, to begin with, has proper slot protection. So that way you don't go through an entire week of pinnacles and get two bonuses the entire week because, you know, you got four energy weapons and six capes and you ended up with, you know, a power level bonus from your energy weapon, your cape, and the random pair of boots you got. So, you got completely screwed out of power leveling, and there was nothing you could do about it because the game just screwed you over. Which doesn't actually feel rewarding at all, and sucks. Most people spent the first two weeks of the season grinding out power levels. I did not. I got to raid power level pretty fast and was like, you know what? I'm good. And I just chilled it. I played one character. I didn't try to three character it. And just chilled. Played what I wanted to play. Farmed what I wanted to farm. Played the new stuff. Instead of doing the same old crap we've done for however many years you've been playing the game. And none of this has really changed at all since Forsaken. I mean, we've been playing. Leveling has been the basic same concept since really Forsaken. Um, a lot of people want to go back to the days where end game content is the only way to level up your gear and i think in a way that makes logical sense 
However, what counts as endgame content is, I think, different to everybody. And that is a slight problem. I think we need to define what is endgame content, define what is regular content, and define what things should drop high-end leveling gear. I think, personally, I don't think regular strikes, three crucible matches, or gambit should give pinnacles. I know that that would lock a lot of people out of ever hitting pinnacle cap, but a lot of people don't need pinnacle cap. And so, there isn't really any reason to have those people hit pinnacle cap. Second, the those three pinnacles don't actually help you a lot. Like, they're plus ones, and if they drop in the same slot that's already higher, you're screwed. So, and plus ones, like, barely do anything for your power level, because you have to get, you know, eight plus ones to actually go up a whole level, whereas you would only need five plus twos, and you would go up a light level, as long as the other two things were on level with your previous light level. And so, if those activities aren't even helping really with the pinnacle grind anyways, then why are they there as pinnacles? I think it's to make it so that the more casual or less hardcore player base can get to pinnacle cap, which I understand why it's there, but I do think it needs to go away because I don't think those are end game activities and I don't think you should be able to hit pinnacle cap off of non end game activities. I do think the powerful cap, the powerful cap is a good thing. I do think that it is something we should have. I do think there should be a way to gauge your progress through a season, through a level, more than just the battle pass level, because that can be grinded out in realistically like a week or two and you can hit a hundred ba battle pass level pretty easy. Especially with how many seasonal challenges they give us the first couple weeks. Like, so easy to hit max level on the pass. And so, I would like to see what their plan is for the future when it comes to leveling. And I do think there needs to be a serious change. Because leveling is boring at this point. Leveling is something that a lot of players do for the, oh hey, I need a level because, well, I need a level so I can play the game again. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I know next season, I'm probably going to take my leveling pretty slow. Um, part of that's because I'm going on vacation in the middle of the season, and so I won't even be able to play GMs when they first come out. So I won't be in this huge rush to play GMs. Um, and that's the only real reason to, like, hit Pinnacle Cap super quickly, is so that way you can play GMs. Because if you're Pinnacle Cap this season, next season you start in Pinnacle Cap, so you can just freely go to the next level um, pretty easily. One, you know, one good week of Pinnacles, your first week, and you'll be, you know, 1562 pretty easily. And you could be, if you do it on all three characters, you know, you could probably be 65 by the end of week one, 70 by the end of week two. Pretty easy leveling stuff there. So, I would love to hear y'all's ideas in the comments of what you think should change when it comes to leveling, what y'all's opinions of the leveling system are. Um, I personally think we need to have endgame content be the only way to level to max level. I think that should include raids, dungeons, Legend and Master Nightfalls, um, Trials, Iron Banner, and I think that should be about it. I think that's about what should drop pinnacles. I think they should all be plus two pinnacles. I think plus one pinnacles are dumb. They do nothing for you, <laughs> and they are a complete waste of your time, most cases. Um, I do think things like Master Vox Obscura, which is like the seasonal, like, uh, exotic quest thing. I think that should 
give a plus two pinnacle. I mean, it, it's pretty difficult, even for a three man team. Like, it's not it's not like you know a run over, a you know speed run through type of thing. Um, it's relatively challenging, all things considered. So you know those kinds of things should give a plus two pinnacle. They require you to be you know close to that level, anyways. So I think they should give plus two pinnacles. I would love to see GMs be here from the start of a season. I think the six week wait is not great right now um, because I know a lot of people just want to play GMs when they're here. Um, and I know a lot of people literally like they play the first two weeks, they don't play for four weeks, and then they play the last nine weeks of the season because they like just playing GMs. Um, so I would love to see GMs be here, like, the master modes of the raids and dungeons, where they're just here, and, like, whether you're a level on them or not, like, good luck, have fun. I would like to see more things have the GM modifier that puts you under light. Most people call it contest, but contest is actually higher. You're actually higher level in contest than you are at GMs, because in GMs you're 25 under. And in contest mode, you are 20 under, and actually, yes, the five levels does matter because the game goes by fives, not by tens. And so, I would love to see more activities have a 25 power level cap on them, and I would love to see them just not have an entry level power cap. But, you know, if you want to be, you know, 30 under a GM, go ahead, have fun you're probably not going to clear it, but good luck, have fun. I would love to see, you know, more activities like Master Vog, where, like, yeah, you can do it week one. Good luck, have fun. You're probably going to get stomped, but you can do it. Um, I would love to see more activities be that way, where, yeah, you're probably going to get ran over by this activity, but you can do it if you want. Um, I think that would help with endgame pursuits. I would also like to see more cosmetic rewards for legendary items um i would also like to see adept weapons either a be craftable at this point i think my initial worry of adept weapons being craftable is no longer a worry um because if you they can make it however many adept weapon red borders they want I mean, they can make it 10, and like, okay, sure, as long as they increase the red border drop rate a little bit, like, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, because I could, or adept weapons need to drop with intrinsic perks, with enhanced perks, and I would even love to see adept weapons drop with enhanced traits. Um, something like, for instance, like, Soul Drinker, it gives you, you know, it gives you 25% more health than it normally does, which wouldn't be a lot, but it would be some, um, which I think would be really cool. Or make it like, oh, it's just, it doesn't make you have to reload to get the health bonus. You just get health bonus every time you cause damage, which might be a little broken, but at the like one or two health it currently is, I, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. It would be baby devour, which devours would still be better than it at base level um i would love to see you know enhanced traits of all the traits of all the like origin traits on all the guns i think that they really are really strong most of them but some of them just aren't worth using but that is gonna be it for today's video i'm getting to the point where i'm just rambling but i just wanted to throw out my opinion on the leveling system maybe throw out some thoughts on maybe some changes that can come to it without a whole lot of work. I'm not a game dev. I know a lot of this stuff is more effort than it probably is, than it probably seems. But I just wanted to give my opinions and my thoughts on the leveling system. I hope that everyone enjoyed this talk. I hope that everyone enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like here on this video to boost the YouTube recommendations of this video and to also give me feedback that you enjoyed the content like this and also please give me please consider giving a subscription to the channel we're pushing for 500 subs before the end of next season so thank you all and i'll see you in the next one goodbye